Daniel in Houston and DJ from Arms Family Homestead and we are making salsa today. That's right. So we finally got enough tomatoes. We got tomatoes all over the place. We've been picking, ta we've been picking tomatoes and uh, peppers. So we got some banana peppers. We got some huge bell peppers going on. And where's the jalapeno peppers, Mom? I don't know. Show me some of them jalapeno peppers. Look at that. So, look at that jalapeno, yeah. Today, we're gonna make a little salsa. Um, I would be lying if I didn't say salsa is probably one of my favorite reasons to have a garden. Um, salsa is super easy to make. Um, it is a little time consuming, but the cool thing about it is anybody can make salsa at home in a water bath canner, or you could make up a batch and just put it in the refrigerator and eat that if you don't wanna make a huge quantity at once. Um, or you could freeze it. I know people that will make salsa and freeze it. So if you don't feel comfortable canning, then there's a lot of other ways you can go about it. Now this isn't gonna be like a step-by-step -step complete instructional video on how to can salsa. There's a ton of videos out there, a ton of good recipes. Um, we are not professionals at canning, so don't follow everything we do to the T. Go find a good reputable uh, salsa recipe um, but anyways, I'm gonna show you a few tips and tricks we do. We get all our tomatoes and peppers. I we like a good- these tiny ones. Look, yeah, we got big tomatoes. You we got see this little one. tomatoes. Houston wants to show you a big one. Look at there. Look at that. Whoa, big tomato, man. That one was a uh, early girl, I think. Oh. Anyway, so we like to uh, make a good fire roasted salsa. So we'll take our uh, tomatoes, core them out, throw them on the grill, we do the same thing with the peppers, cut the ends off, cut the seeds out, and throw them on the grill and get them charred up a little bit and uh, make our salsa that way. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. You like salsa? No. No? It's starting to burn my lungs. So where's your gloves at, Mom? Shouldn't you wear gloves for that? Probably, but I'm not. Daddy, is this lid for that? Daddy. So we don't do anything super fancy. We just take our tomatoes, core them out really well, and throw them on the grill. Um, I know a lot of people disagree with making salsa the way we do, and the fact that we don't peel our potatoes. I'm sorry, peel our tomatoes. Um, but we run all of our tomatoes through a food processor and grind them up really small, and we found that the skins really don't affect anything at all they don't ball up in there and you don't end up with big pieces of tomato skins but grilling them like this gives them a really good flavor kind of a fire roasted tomato but it also helps get rid of some of that juice so these tomatoes will lose a lot of their juices since we're not just canning um, like roma tomatoes or a san marzano we're just doing regular old tomatoes they have a lot of juice in them a lot of water in them which makes your salsa kind of watery, but this step takes a lot of that juice out. So here we go. Let's grill them up. So our tomatoes and a few peppers have been on the grill for, I don't know, about 10 minutes. Came out and turned them over once. As you can see, they're really starting to shrivel down. Um, getting, a, getting a really nice um, char on them a little bit. So the, the skins are actually really starting to slip off. But these things will make a lot of juice when you start pulling them off. So I'm gonna put them in a big plastic tub, basically, because they will be a juicy, mushy mess coming off the grill like this. Um, it makes for, makes for a really messy grill, I'm not gonna lie. Um, there's quite a bit of cleanup on the grill. I'll probably just have to take, uh, take my grill grates off and power wash them later so they don't mess up. But you can see some of these tomatoes just completely fall apart on the grill. So before we start running these tomatoes through the food processor, uh, I know somebody's probably gonna shame me for this, but I'm fixing to drain this juice off these tomatoes. Um, I'll put some in a bowl just so we don't you, you know, pour out too much of it. Um, but you don't want watery salsa, so I'm gonna pour as much of the juice off of here as I can. Howdy, cowboys! Howdy, cowboys! 
So that's, you know, quite a bit of water or tomato juice that came off of those tomatoes that Let me see. will make our salsa a little more chunky and not so watery. Ooh. Okay guys, so we typically, or I typically, I love chopping um, vegetables and things like that. It's like therapy for me. But when we're doing a big batch like this, um, we use a food processor. And this one's kind of small, but we haven't gone out and bought another one. So we just borrow this one for my mom when we need it and it speeds up the process really good. So, I'm gonna put my knife down and we're gonna get to processing. Woo! Yummy. Peppers, roasted onions and peppers, and some really hot tomatoes. Yum! Smells divine in here. So we really like this restaurant style salsa where everything's really ground up pretty small. I found that our kids like that a lot better. If they can see big chunks of onions and big chunks of peppers and big chunks of tomatoes, they don't like it that way. So we make what our family enjoys and our family enjoys that super ground up salsa. And that's why we dump a lot of the water out um, after we roast those peppers and roast the tomatoes, I mean. Um, so it's not so watery, but it's uh, not like a big thick chunky salsa. Yeah. So salsa is really easy to make. Honestly, it's there's not a whole lot goes into it. This is almost a 100% homegrown here. Um, we grew all the tomatoes, onions, peppers, uh, and the garlic. But there's a few other ingredients that go into making a good salsa. You need lots and lots of cilantro, lime juice, and cumin. We use a lot of cumin um, in our salsa. So uh, one tip, if you can't grow enough tomatoes, obviously it takes a lot of tomatoes. I know a lot of people don't have the, as much room as we do to grow that many tomatoes. Grow what you can and then go to the store, go to your grocery store in like the, the bulk canned goods section. They sell gallon cans of like crushed tomatoes, stewed tomatoes, but they also sell fire roasted canned tomatoes. And just buy you a can of those, mix in with your tomatoes and uh, I promise you it's good. What you been working on on the side here? Tell us all about what you got going there. A little bit of pico. Pico de gallo. We're gonna have some tacos for supper. Yep, we are. I'm gonna add some avocado to it later. Taco Monday, Taco Tuesday, Taco Wednesday. If you saw our live stream, you know what I'm talking about. So we've got our uh, salsa over here in the, it's actually just a big canning pot, but we're, we let it cook. We try to cook it down for, oh, 30 minutes or so. Try to burn a little bit more of the juice off of that. Let everything get all mixed together and kind of taste it as we go to see if we need to add more salt, cumin, lime juice, things like that. So, as I said earlier, um, you just you can just water bath can salsa. It's super simple. Uh, the tomatoes are a high acid vegetable, so you can water bath can tomatoes. Now, when you start adding peppers and onions and things like that, um, you have to up that acidity level, and that's where the lime juice comes in. But we also add a little bit of vinegar just to get that acidity level up so this stuff stays nice and safe and we don't get sick when we can this stuff. Um, we didn't really make a huge batch today. Uh, while we, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how much it turns out to be. There's several quarts there. Um, we're going to hang out at some friend's house tonight. So I don't know, it depends on how many jars this makes. If it only makes three or four or five jars, we may not even can it at all. We may just get it in the jar, throw it in the refrigerator and uh because i know we've got some friends that'll want some and uh my mother-in-law i'm sure my mother-in-law will want a jar of it so first run of salsa for 2018 is almost in the books so we let our salsa cook for about 30 minutes and now we're going to put them in the jars yes so we got all the the jars cleaned and sterilized and now we're going to fill them up scoot it over here there you go Hmm. <laughs> Look at that yumminess. Getting warm. There you go. Okay. Yum. Okay. Let's get busy on this. 
that one in line for you. Thank you. So we've got all of our jars in the water bath canner here. We ended up with six quarts and three pints. Uh, that made a lot more salsa than I was expecting. Um, I was really only kind of thinking to make about four quarts and a one or two pint jars, but uh, it actually turned out quite a bit of salsa. So um, as I said, this is not a one-on-one, 100% -on -one, how-to instructional guide to how to make salsa. This is just kind of a rough go of it. Just, I don't want to be that, 100% instructional video guy that um, puts out bad canning information and makes somebody sick. We don't want to do that. But it is hopefully a little bit of an inspiration for you guys to get out there, can some salsa. I'm telling you what, if you've got people in your life that you can't find that perfect gift for, make them a can of salsa or a jar of salsa or some jam or something like that and they'll love you forever. They make perfect gifts and you can store this stuff for months on the shelf and it's delicious it'll be just like um, summertime in the middle of January when you pop open one of those jars of salsa so uh, we've talked about doing some other salsas type stuff we were talking all ago making some fruit based salsa and like a like a peach salsa or a mango salsa we've never actually made that ourselves, but it's really good so we may look into trying that and right now we're just gonna wait on the water bath canner to start come up to a rolling boil, drop those jars down in, and then we'll pull them out and show them to you before we end the video. You can do this, just get in here. Just get in here. Oh. Well guys, there you have it. There's the final tally, six quarts, three pints. I made a lot more salsa than what I was expecting, so wow. it did pretty awesome. And, and like I said earlier, this isn't really a how-to video. This is just, hey guys, we wanna help you Make up the courage, build up the courage to get out there and just do it yourself. Can some salsa. It's super easy. Even if you don't can it, just make a small batch. Get your food processor out, grind you up some tomatoes, onions, peppers, throw in some lemon juice, cumin, um, and, I'm sorry, lime, lime juice, juice, cumin, and cilantro, a little salt. Oh, it's delicious. You'll love it. It's amazing. And uh, yeah, we love making salsa. That's part of the, I mean, that's probably the biggest reason we grow tomatoes mm -hmm. is for our salsa every year. So, yeah. guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Houston's not here for the sign-off because he's taking a nap. Him and Weston are both sound asleep. We lost them. So, <laughs> anything you want to say? No. I had fun. I'm ready to try some of it. We're out of chips. Out of chips. I mean, well, it's a good thing we're going out to some friend's house. Know. And we're having tacos for supper. Yep. So, we'll take a jar of salsa and we'll get to try it. Guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Y'all have a great day and we'll see you on the next video. Peace out.